Hi, I'm Mike Sintolo, Chief Analyst of Cavic Growth Investor and Cavic Top 10 Trader. I'm here with your Cabot Weekly Review, recording this late Friday morning, as usual, on Friday, March 8th. So there's not too much new to say. I mean, the market is very strong. A lot of stuff is pretty well, very extended, especially some of the stocks that have been running for a while. Um, but overall, you know, the trends are up, intermediate term trend, long term trend, most leading stocks act fine, so on and so forth. So overall, I remain, you know, generally bullish, obviously, because most of the evidence is. I am seeing um, this week, I'm talking about it more, but I've seen it over the last, say, three weeks, even a little bit longer, you know, not unusual after four months up. We're seeing more of a stock by stock situation. Some of the names that have been running for a while are either, like I said, very extended or we're starting to see some churning where things are kind of going up, down, up, down, maybe making a little progress, but just a lot of volatility and not a lot of progress. Whereas two months ago, it was like, you know, up. You know, it'd go up three or four days, pull back for a day or two, up five days, you know, that sort of thing. This is more up, down, up, down, okay? Um, number one. Number two, I'm seeing a lot more fresher names. Now, some of those names <clears throat> might have been leaders in November, December, like, say, like home builders, and then they took two or three months off, and now they're trying to emerge again, look like they are emerging again. Some of them might be uh, not laggards, but just kind of newer names. I think I mentioned some of these last week that are starting to gap, you know, on earnings the last two or three weeks. And they look a little bit fresher. Now, obviously, if the market is, you know, going to pull back eight or nine percent, everything's probably going to get hit. So I'm not saying these will be immune to it. But my guess is the fresher names will be uh, more immune to, you know, some sort of pullbacks uh, if we do get a pullback in the market. Um, and if we do continue to run, they should be earlier stage and have further upside. So that's just kind of where I'm focused on buying. The only thing I have to say and I will talk about is, you know, again, I know I say this, you know, probably too much, but, you know, keep your feet on the ground. You know, we'll look at NVIDIA and stuff like that. But, you know, when you get a stock that's up, you know, it's 40% above its 50-day line. There's It's gapping up every day. You know, it's not about calling a top. It's not about selling all your shares. It's just about realizing that, like, hey, a lot of good news is probably being priced in right now. A lot of momentum's in there. At some point, it's going to pull back. It's not going to pull back going sideways. It's probably going to pull back sharply. So just have a plan in place. That's really the key for how you want to handle some of these winners. It's a good quote unquote problem to have because you got some of these tigers by the tail, it's just how you want to play it out going forward. Okay, enough of that. Let's hop into the charts. I'm using a product called Market Surge. They changed the name, added a few new features. So you should check it out. Product called Market Surge. It is from Investors Business Daily. You can learn more at marketsurge.com. Get out my pen here. So, you know, here's the NASDAQ. And on the index front, it looks fine. It's kind of in this... I'm not a big channel guy and all this. I, I just, you can always draw a line on the chart, but it's in this sort of, you know, uptrending channel. It is extended. It's about, I think I looked here. Let me go back. Uh, let's see, track price. Well, anyway, I can't get it to work here, but take my word for it. The NASDAQ's up about maybe six, six and a half percent, I think, above its 50 day line, which is pretty extended for a major index. But either way, the trend is up. The 25 day line, this green line, has been offering kind of support on these periodic pullbacks, including the one that was uh, earlier this week on Monday or two, I think it was Tuesday, when things shook out pretty good, okay? So the trend is up there, and just, just running through the major indexes. Same sort of thing, S&P, you know, you're getting, I don't wanna say out of trend, but you know, it's it's extended. I mean, that's all you can say, extended a little bit short term, you can see we're way above the 50 day line, doesn't mean you have to pull back, but you know, given what's been going on here, it's been, you know, usually you kind of get some exhale after some of these moves. One thing we are seeing more of is some um, broadening. So here's the IWM. It's been, this is the small caps, Russell 2000. It's kind of hard to see on this chart. So let me, they can change the price scale maybe. Yeah, there you go. So it's a little bit bigger. You can see this 200 level, um, which, you know, whatever, 205 was recently. It's just been kind of resistance here for the last, whatever, couple of years, year and a half, whatever it's been. And we're starting to stretch our legs. I'm not a big breakout guy with the indexes, but you know it is what it is. So we're starting to stretch our legs here with small caps. And we're especially seeing it like in the mid caps, MDY. Um, again, maybe if you look at the weekly chart, um, not as it wasn't as weak as the small caps. We can see it's this 500 level, I guess, with MDY, I didn't even know. Um, had kind of capped things, it's been toying around with it. And now you can see it accelerating higher. And just note that, I mean, I don't, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think this is a nine weeks up in a row, which is usually a pretty good sign when looking out. Doesn't mean, you know, you can't pull back short term, you're a little extended. So we are seeing, seeing things broaden out. Um, the RSP, you know, I had mentioned 
these things really hadn't gone anywhere for a couple months, but now RSP, which is the unweighted or equally weighted S&P 500 hitting new, I think it's new all-time highs actually up here, okay? Um, and this is just going along with what's interesting here is we had this, in, on an intermediate term basis, the trend of interest rates stopped going down. You could say it started going up. This is a 10-year note. Um, it's kind of a messy chart, but I can't get rid of a lot of these things. But, you know, pretty sharp decline, and it did pull back, but nothing crazy. I mean, it was above the 50-day line and stuff like that. But my point is now we're starting to see things come off. We'll, we'll see what happens. There's always there's an inflation report next week, jobs report today, all this stuff. But, you know, overall, we're seeing rates remain kind of low. And, of course, the expectations are it's, it's just a matter of when the Fed's going to cut, not if, it sounds like, you know. Same thing with the five-year note. So it's good to see interest rates, you know, back down. And I just think the obviously the lower the better. But, you know, the more that they can kind of handle this, um, I'm going to call this pullback within the, after this top, as the longer that they can kind of hold down here, the greater the chance that you know the next big move will be down. So we'll see how it plays out, but that's that's kind of a small positive, okay? Um, and just going along with what's where I mean, just a lot of stuff's working. This is the IPO fund, so just on the growth side of things, um, the IBD fifty index. It's been a little churny. I mean, again, it's been kind of up down, not a lot of progress here the last really the last month or so. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's been above the 25 day line the entire time. So how much weakness is there? And this is, you know, I always like to look at the mutual fund X because this is real money. This is a mutual fund guys who this is what they do. They, you know, a lot of pressure on them. And the mutual fund index, which has a lot of, uh, this is the growth oriented mutual funds, you know, kind of kicked off a few weeks ago and has been pretty much straight up since then with, with some wobbles, of course, during the week, all right? Um, but overall then, you know, a lot of that stuff is obviously acting well, okay? Now, I will just say chips have been, chip stocks, they were really the leaders off the bottom, so to speak, AI stuff and all that last year. And they did pull back to this 40-week line. And again, you could call this a long-term breakout, but, you know, intermediate term-wise, it's been three or four months, whatever, however you want to measure it. And right now you're just starting to get, you know, gap, 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 <laughs> you know, so every day almost, even today, I think there was a couple of stocks that got hit, chip stocks, not hit, but, you know, down after earnings a little bit and, you know, gaps up. So, you know, you're very extended, just be aware of it. And my main thing with some of these stocks is like, this is the, this is what you want. You want to own the stock and then it runs for three or four months and you have a huge profit. <clears throat> but then it's kind of like, well, what do you do? The easy thing to do is nothing. And that's okay if you want to do that, because I do think longer term, some leaders can be a lot, and the market can be a lot higher down the road, okay? At the same time, you know, this is, the SMH is at 237, and the 50-day lines call it at one night, so call it 200. So, I mean, this thing could pull back 15%. The index could pull back 15%, which means fast-moving stocks could pull back 2025, and still just be down to kind of intermediate term support. So I'm not predicting anything. Um, I'm just saying, make sure you have a plan how you want to handle it, whether it's, you know, I'm usually a fan of some partial profits. You're never going to sell at the top. You're going to sell early or late or both. Um, but I kind of like taking a little bit off when the ducks, you know, feed the ducks while they're quacking, so to speak, and then see how things play out. Maybe it keeps going up. Maybe it pulls back sharply and then starts to rebound and has another run. You know, you can always see how it goes. Um, but you know, just, just keep your feet on the ground and just have a plan. Same thing, you know, NVIDIA, of course, is the name in the news here. Um, again, you know, I mean, just here was the earnings report right here. So this is a huge gap. That's a little bit different. But then you just have these, you know, all these gaps. It's almost twice as high as its 200-day line. It's 40-something percent above its 50-day. You know, again, just have a plan. Sit down this weekend if you own some of these things. And just, you know, how do you want to handle it? What happens if the stock pulls back a couple hundred points? which would bring it to the 25 day moving average, <laughs> you know, what if it, you know, reversed or whatever, you know, how do you want to handle it? Do you want to sell some here? Is the position size super small? It doesn't really matter. Is it really big? Just make sure you have a plan for some of these names that have been running for four or five months and how you want to play it out over time. The goal is to make money uh, and hopefully make big money, but that doesn't mean, you know, timing everything perfectly. In fact, usually it, it almost never does. So you just want to have that plan in place. Okay. Now on to a more, sort of optimistic stock. I'm just seeing more sort of fresher things pop up, okay? Maybe you could say these are laggards popping, but I don't think so. I mean, to me, it's mo if, if, if you see, um, you know, I mean, these, this is garbage, but, you know, if you see GameStop or whatever, you know, if you see GameStop gapping up 
or some stock that's, you know, just like this, it's kind of down, maybe it's up a little bit, but it, it's basically still on its knees and then it gaps up. Well, that is kind of a laggard. But what I'm seeing is a lot of stocks that like, you know, this is pure storage, PSTG. Um, we're seeing some, no, you know, the chips obviously are well known, but now it's kind of like what else in AI, right? There's some software, although there's some of those names got hit. There's some, um, you know, storage needs that are going to be met. There's going to be platforms, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, pure storage got going PSTG about a year ago, really, in the initial AI wave and just spent months and months and months kind of doing nothing net net. And then finally, it's kind of had its sort of change of character after earnings. And you can just see, you know, not just up for a day, but day, then day two, then day three and so on and so forth. You know, do you chase it here? I mean, probably not. It's up to you. But, you know, any sort of pullback or tightness or some sort of consolidation or rotation would be kind of interesting there. Um, App Lovin, I've mentioned before, APP. Again, short term, a lot of things are I mean, pretty much everything that's good is sort of short term extended right now. Um, but on the weekly chart, we talked about this. It had its, you know, came back about halfway from its huge bear decline, went nowhere for four months. And then again, had that earnings gap about a month ago. And it's just been acting, you know, it's pulled back, but it's been acting pretty well since then. OK, uh, Palantir. Now, this is AI, but it's kind of more on the platform side of things. Very volatile stock, um, but kind of like PSTG, um, it had the initial AI wave. And of course, lots of ups and downs here. I mean, this is like a 30 percent range, but net net did nothing for many months and then had its sort of coming out party a month ago. Um, you can see on this big earnings move again, not just one day on some of these earnings. A lot of times these things have one of the big differentiators, not guaranteed, but when you see a stock kind of go up and do it for two or three days in a row on big volume after earnings, after a consolidation, that's usually a good sign that's not going to like kind of gap and just fall apart. Anyway, that's an aside. Um, so Palantir did that, pulled back normally in here. And, you know, the 25 day line just kind of almost caught up. Then it's had some good news this week, some good volume buying. Again, a lot of these things probably would look better on some sort of control dip. We'll see how it plays out. But Palantir looks goody, pretty good. And then even in the chip space, I would just mention a couple things. This is Arm Holdings. I wrote this up in Growth Investor. It 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 got almost meme, not meme-like, but kind of weird. You know, it gapped up on earnings like huge. And then like a couple days later, you can just see it went up. It pretty much doubled in a few days, which was... Don't get me wrong, the numbers were good, but you know, um, and then it kind of fell right back down and all this stuff. What's it? Because the float isn't that big. Interestingly, though, the stock, don't get me wrong, it's moving 20 points every couple of days, but it's starting to settle down in here. Um, and you know, if it could kind of settle down and tighten up a little bit, maybe the moving averages catch up could be interesting. So some of these chip stocks could still be earlier than later, so to speak. Not that I'm not saying Nvidia's late can't go higher. Um, down the road. But I'm just saying it's not like these things are just been running for four or five months and everybody's talking about them sort of thing. Okay, so Arm Holdings is one in that group to take an eye on. Um, elsewhere, Axon Enterprises. We mentioned this, it seems like once every three or four months, you know, um, the stock kind of had this nice consolidation and then just nice and tight in here. And then I think I mentioned it last week, gapped up on earnings. And again, so far this week, just very tight in there, acting well, very well sponsored these days. It's still a little choppy. It's not the most you know, doesn't trade that much volume, but it's higher price. So it's just an interesting name. I mentioned in the intro, I think, about home builders. This is the ITB, which is the ETF. Um, very homogenous group. Some sometimes there's you know some lead, some lag type thing. Um, but you can just kind of see this very persistent decline last year, and then again, maybe I should blow up this price scale here um, if it works. Yeah. Okay, very persistent decline. And then just just a very, you know, elephant tracks is what we call them, where it's just you can't, you know, the institutions are just getting it. I mean, every week it closed at its peak, absolutely no pullbacks when the when it it went up that week, but it was very tight, you know, just no selling at all. Just no selling. It would gap up, you know, 10 points and then just sit there like nobody was selling. Finally, there became a little bit of selling, you know, some profit taking here. But again, the group just kind of went sideways for, say, I don't know, mid-December to mid-February. And now it's starting to emerge, okay? Toll Brothers is probably the best looking one right now, um, partially because it had earnings recently and it gapped up and so on and so forth. Um, but there's a few of them that look good, Lennar, Palti, and stuff like that that are hitting new price highs. Um, so this is good, TOL. To so not, you know, super fast names, but in the same vein, you know, Builder, uh, BLDR, um, not as fresh type thing, but just kind of in a firm uptrend. So a lot of the housing stuff looks good. 
Retail, I wrote about retail and CGI this week. You know, Fresh Pet is one name. The stock does trade pretty thinly at times, so just be aware of that. Um, but the stock, you know, it, it, it looks right. I mean, just big bottom, very tight. Gaps on earnings. Look at this week, very tight in there. Yes, if the market pulls in 7%, obviously, like a lot of these things could come in. But so far, so good in terms of this. Now, I, w I would say that, like I just said, this didn't have, you know, four or five days in a row of, you know, rally after earnings. So, you know, but even so, it certainly hasn't, you know, given up any ground either. So, so far, so good on Fresh Pet. And then Celsius, CELH, you know, just big move on earnings kind of coming out of this consolidation. Not the fret, you know, not the, um, it's very obvious. I mean, a lot of people talk about it, I guess I would say. But nice move and nice follow through to the upside on earnings. So that looks pretty good. And like Next Tracker, solar is still, eh, you know, like not so good. But Next Tracker, especially on the weekly chart here, just kind of, you know, had a week or two or three up after earnings. Very tight here the last three or four weeks. Looks pretty good. And then um, this is kind of interesting. Airbnb, been kind of keeping a distant eye on that. You know, Airbnb kind of reminds me of um, Uber a little bit fundamentally. Well, Kind of fundamentals where it intersects with the stock market where it is kind of a blue chip stock right but you know the company came public um this is the monthly chart so the company came public in early well i guess late 2020 you know right kind of near the growth stock top and all that sort of thing and the numbers have the company's gotten a lot bigger the numbers have slowed of course this one had the pandemic to deal with long story short it's been kind of you know rallied here pulled back tried to get going pulled back again um, but now it seems like it's kind of basing out and just kind of quietly gaining steam. It's not the strongest thing out there relative to the market yet, but I'm kind of interested with Airbnb. It could be one of these, um, you know, if there's a rotation to some other groups, a name that I think could become sort of a liquid leader. But, you know, back to the market, I would just say two things. Yeah, when, you, when you're looking at new buying, I would be looking at fresher stuff. Um, I just think the odds are better with that. I mean, I think you have, first of all, you have stocks that are at, somewhat decent entry points that you can find, you know, a loss limit. And, you know, they seem like they just got going and had some real power recently. They're not sticking straight up in the air. Um, but also they should be, you know, earlier in the advance. So if we keep going or if things wobble, but, you know, don't really pull back in the market, they should have further upside. OK, with the other stuff, whether it's the market, whether it's chip stocks, whether it's some winners that you have, I think my message to you is just have a plan. Obviously, we're giving advice in our advisories, but have a plan that suits you in terms of your position size, stops, partial profits. Maybe you want to buy, maybe you want to, you know, sell some and buy more. You know, whatever your plan is, I would just say just make sure you have one because my guess is some of these, listen, at some point, if they've been running four or five months, they're going to pull back. I hope they don't, but odds favor, you're going to get a pullback at some point. It's not going to pull back by going down 1% a day for a few days. It's going to have a sharp shakeout. So just have your plan in place some stops and how you want to handle it. But overall, listen, it's a bull move. It's very strong. Big picture, I still think it's relatively early. Intermediate term, though, like I said, I think it's more of a stock by stock situation. Okay, that's all the time I have for today. Thanks for watching and be sure to come by again next week for another Cabot Weekly Review.